going everybody? Today I'm working on a walk-in freezer. Uh, apparently it got dinged by the health inspector. Uh, it wasn't getting below like four or five degrees. So let's go see what's going on. So as we can see here, uh, it's showing there we're about three degrees. Let me put my meter in here. It's eight degrees. So that thermometer is not reading 100% accurately. Let's go based on our uh, air probe there. All right, so let's go do our general checks. So first thing we're gonna do is come over to our condensing unit here. And let's check our sight glass. And our sight glass is low, it's flashing. So let's go over to our coil. Our fan is running. There's no ice in the fan area. No ice behind the coil, which is nice. So we do not have a freeze up situation. So I'm just going to perform a quick stress test here um, just to show how long it should take to cool down. Now the floor is not insulated here so it's going to take a while. So we're at 7 degrees. We'll start our stopwatch and go from there. Okay so we're about 10 minutes in and we've dropped 3 degrees which is pretty decent. And finally we're 20 minutes in and now we're not dropping. So in the last 10 minutes we dropped maybe one degree so we definitely have an issue here and last but not least 27 minutes in we dropped another one degree only so we definitely have some issues here all right so let's go check our pressures and see what's going on so we have 12 and 203 all right so as you can see there our suction pressure was 12 our head pressure was 203 so let's go figure out what we need or what we should be getting so to get our suction pressure uh, all we're going to do is take our current box temp and subtract our evap td which is basically our superheat so let's just call it 10 so our current box temperature uh, was 3 fahrenheit and then if we subtract our 10 superheater or 10 TD that's going to give us minus 7 Fahrenheit and then our head pressure is just going to simply be our ambient plus our condenser split in this case it is a 30 Fahrenheit condenser split we had 73 Fahrenheit ambient we're going to simply add our 30 Fahrenheit and that's going to give us 103 Fahrenheit. All right, so if we uh, pull up our PT chart here, so minus 7 Fahrenheit gives us 26.2. So let's just call it 26 PSI. And then our condenser saturation is 103 Fahrenheit. So let's go pull that up. So based on that, we're looking for 247. And as you can see, we're getting 12 and we're looking for 26. And on our high side, we're looking for 247. We're getting 203. So let's go over to our refrigeration cycle chart. All right, so we are looking for 26 PSI. We're only getting 12 PSI. And on our high side, we're getting 203 PSI. And we're looking for around 247 PSI. So that's telling us uh, our suction side is low, our high side is low, and based on our sight glass, that's telling us we are low on charge. All right, so my condenser's a little bit dirty here, so let's get it all brushed off, uh, get it cleaned up. Uh, we'll shoot some Viper in there. We'll let it do its thing here, uh, let it foam up, let it pull out all that dust and dirt and grease and all that good stuff. All right, so I've turned off power to the condensing unit. I've left power at the coil so that our solenoids open. That's gonna help us equalize the system. So I'm ripping things apart while it equalizes. You can see there we have 71 pounds of pressure on our suction side. That should be more than enough for me to pick up the leak here. If not, uh, we'll do a recovery and pump some nitrogen in. But let's see what happens. We got a bunch of flare joints here. So we're gonna go hit up all the usual suspects. I don't see any signs of oil. 
So my guess is potentially we're going to have a leak in the evaporator coil. But let's do our due diligence here and see if we can find anything. And I am getting a hit here, somewhere here on the suction line accumulator. So let's investigate this a little bit further. Let me pull up some insulation. And definitely getting a hit here. So let's peel everything back. Let's go check all these solder joints. We have a couple 90s. Um, everything's checking out up here. And we're definitely getting a hit on the backside here, right around 11, 12 o'clock. Um, meter's going insane. So we definitely have a leak here on this brace joint. And if you look really closely here, I'll try to get the right lighting. You can see they didn't braze all the way around. So you can see somewhere around 1130, they didn't finish brazing. So let's go confirm this with uh, some soap. And let's shoot her up here with some soap. And it's gonna be somewhere between 11.30 and let's call it two o'clock. There's definitely a leak in there somewhere. Uh, the unit was installed in 2015. So the leak's small, we've never been called out for a leak. So it is a tiny leak. Uh, this thing's been leaking for six, seven years now. I'm starting to see a really small bubble. Let me see if I can get the camera in a better spot. And there we go. Right around that 11 o'clock. Right where our meter was going. That's between 11 and 12 o'clock. We can see the bubble right there. Let's try to zoom in. Get the right lighting. There we go. There's the bubble. You can see it. So that's good. We can snap a photo of that. Send it to the customer. Well, let's just pop it there. And if we look super closely, you're just going to see the bubbles are going to just going to start growing like crazy. Right there. So let's call that 1130. We have a leak right there, a little pinhole. So let me go ahead and hit up this evaporator coil really quickly. Uh, we'll just hit fast forward on it just to make things go by a little bit quicker. We've got a couple flare joints here, which I don't like using on these solenoids. Let's go hit everything up and then our most common leaks are on these U-bends. This coil is from 2015. It looks clean. I don't see oil, but let's just do our due diligence. Let's make sure there's no leaks. And left side, left hand side checks out. Right hand side, let's quickly hit that up. And we're all good there in the coil. So I've cleaned this up with my uh, wire brush on my drill and you can see the little hole there. Okay, so it's really tight to braze here, so when they did the installation, um, obviously they didn't braze all the way around. So we're gonna go lay this on really thick. Now for a walk-in cooler, um, the shoulder's not as important, but on a walk-in freezer, uh, we'll get just the moisture in there, and then when it goes into defrost, expansion, contraction, we will get cracks on these welds. So I always put a really thick shoulder on a, on a walk-in freezer whenever I'm brazing. So it's not always about looks. Um, you know, we just want that thing on there super thick. And you can see, not the prettiest weld, but man, that thing is never gonna leak on me. Okay, nice and thick, we're good there. And last but not least, let's go do a quick beep test here. See if our leak detector picks up anything. I'm gonna go super slow here, take my time. Uh, we know the leak was at 11.30, but between 11.30 and 2 o'clock was really questionable. I laid on that shoulder super thick here. So I'm going to go nice and slow, take my time, do not want to get a call back. I don't want to be responsible for any lost product or anything like that. And it looks like everything is checking out here. We no longer have a leak. I'm happy with this. All right, so let's start charging up our unit here until our sight glass is clear. And you can see here we have about 72 ambient, 73. And let's start charging to our sight glass. 
All right, my sight glass is full. We're at nine degrees now. So let's just go do a quick stress test here. Start our, our stopwatch. So we're at three degrees, so we dropped six degrees in about 18 minutes. We do not have an insulated floor. Uh, this thing has been off for a couple hours, so it's really gonna take its time. So now we're at one degree at 26 minutes. I'm good with that. Uh, that concludes our stress test. And last but not least, let's go check our final pressure. Sight glass is clear. We got a 76 ambient. And our pressures are 24 and 252. 24 PSI and 252 PSI. So based on 24 PSI, it'll be somewhere here will give us minus 10. So that equals minus 10 Fahrenheit. And then our 252 here, We'll try to get in the range. Let's call it 105, somewhere in there. So 252 equals 105 Fahrenheit. So if we go do our calculation here, so based on our current box temperature was one Fahrenheit, we subtract our TD, let's call it a 10 Fahrenheit. That equals minus nine Fahrenheit. And we are getting 10 Fahrenheit off by one degree. I would call that pretty good. And then over here, we're at 76 ambient. And we're going to add our 30 condenser split. And that's going to give us 106 Fahrenheit. And we're getting 105 Fahrenheit. So as you can see, we're off by one degree here, one degree here. Our charge is good. And this is the importance of why you need to know your saturation temperatures and correlation to pressure. And just by a simple calculation, it's going to show us uh, whether we're in the ballpark or not. And in this case, we're off by one degree, um, which means we're definitely charged correctly. System is running efficiently and we are all good here.